Uh, at this time, I would like you all to give a warm welcome to Lars Sipple. Capstone presentation. So for this, for my capstone, I decided to do a engineering project because next year I'm off to college and planning to study engineering. And so for that, I had no idea what to do, but I got some. My inspiration was from this video that me and a couple of my friends made over the summer. Also, warning: there is profanity. I was supposed to do that. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Check, check. <laughs> I don't know where to check. Check, check. Go out. Check, 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 check. I'm trying to help with it. I'm taking it, bro. I shoot to my right, my face on the left. I heard my sight, but I'm not a real. These niggas that won't take over slip. Check, my bitch, she clutch because she a nurse. Whenever I'm down, she give me a perk. The police pull up, my gun in her purse. The cops pull up, put him on the shirt. Just came in this world, and we looking for murder. I figured why not do something based off of that and just my goal okay uh next slide so I had a few goals of the project that I wanted to satisfy and those were basically I would want to experience the engineering design process just to get uh used to it before college a little bit I want to learn some new skills with that I could use in the future, which I accomplished. I didn't want to spend more than 50 bucks and I want to have some fun along the way. And so, yeah. All right. So the engineering design process in the, is basically represented by this picture. It's ask, imagine, plan, create, improve. And it's a complete cycle that you repeat over and over again. And so the first stage of the process is the ask phase. I want to identify the problem that I want to uh, solve. And at first that was hard because there were so many issues that I didn't like, know what I was doing. But then I figured the first step is just how can I launch the ball? Because I want to, yeah, I don't even know if I said that. My project fix, I want to design a, a, a robotic thing that can serve ping pong balls to some way that pitching machine could do. Yeah. All right, uh, the next step in this process was the imagine step. And this is about the brainstorming ideas and then choosing the best one. I had a ton of different ideas about how to do uh, anything. So it was hard to choose the best one, but basically in the first step, I wanted to choose how to the ball forward and I chose to use a wheel to, to propel the ball forward because I figured that was the easiest to do. All right, the planning stage is basically just about figuring out what you need and ordering parts. And that's what I did. I had to order some motors, some wires and some batteries and a few more things, but I tried to keep it limited and use Slides I had around me. Okay, and then the next phase is the next phase is the create phase, and that's when I start building the the machine. And so my first project is, is what I was building on the right. You can see there, and it just out of popsicle sticks and cardboard and stuff, and it didn't really work well. But it's just about the the process. And so basically what I did here is I just use this part just to 
Um, I had to use this to, to get the basic design going just so it can work. Sorry. Should I go back? Yeah, uh, forwards. Forward. All right. All right. So, one, two. Oh. So, not that one. This one? Yes. Okay. All right. So, the next, the final step in the process, which actually isn't the final step, is the improvement phase. And this is when I reflect on the designs I did and I see what can be improved. So, uh, wait, I went too far. Wait, here, do I, does this work? Yeah. Now I'm going to go back. There we go. There you go. Uh. <laughs> you know, we're going backwards now. Is it delayed? Um. Oh, so you want to go forwards, right? Yeah. So try the forwards. There you go. Is it, is it still there? Yeah, that's, that's oh, okay. it there. It, there is a, a slow delay because some of these are connecting through oh, I see. Zoom. Okay, I yeah. Anyways. I... Uh, the improved phase is the final phase, and that's when I take what I have and reflect on what can be better. And so on the left here, you can see my, uh, the first idea for it, and that was, it kind of worked, but it didn't really work at a lot of zaps in and stuff, and didn't really go far. Next phase, I used two wheels, and that worked a little bit better. It got, it like, it worked, but it wasn't great. And then the final one, was a lot more consistent and worked like most of the time on the right. And that's the basic of what I did. And so that's how I propel the ball forward. And that's been my basic, the most basic part of the whole thing. And so uh, my, pro my product so far, I didn't, I didn't, I definitely haven't finalized or anything. I just got it to be working. It has three main components. It has the, the propelling stage, which is what I already talked about, the and the the part that'll spread the balls out so they don't just all come out at once, and that's uh, done by using a disc on the top that'll rotate and only let some of them through. And so you can you can't really you can't see that yet. And the third is Raspberry Pi. I use the Raspberry Pi, which is a small pocket computer to control the motors, and this. I didn't get fully working by the end. The idea of it was to be able to control the spin and power of it, but there were a few ideas I had to troubleshoot. Okay. So um, the Raspberry Pi, so Raspberry Pi is a small pocket computer that's used for small projects like these, but it can also be used for big projects. And about five years ago, my grandfather gave me a Raspberry Pi that I never got to use. I figured that Capstone would be the perfect time to use it. And so I decided to use it and I learned a lot. And that's this is a, one of my biggest takeaways from the whole thing. I, uh, so the Raspberry Pi, it looks like that we can see on the left. And it's just a small computer that you can completely like, uh, that you just completely uh, customize to do your own thing. I used it just to control the motors and I had the biggest challenge of this is learning how to code it. So I had to learn Python a little bit. And the main thing that helped was it's the chip here, the L293B, which will, uh, which will let me control the motors. And so Python is the computer program that I used to use this. And so on the right is all the wiring that you need for the Raspberry Pi to work, and on the left is the coding. The coding didn't end up working, and I'm still not sure why, so I'll have to figure that out later, but um, yeah, so this is it so far. If, uh, yeah. So this will allow me to control the spin on the ball and to control the power that's projected. And then the ball distribution is another thing. I, the biggest problem with this is I didn't have a motor that was spin slow enough to do this. I wanted to spin once every two seconds. So I'd use gears and I actually used Legos for this. I went back to my roots. 
<laughs> and so yeah, so Lego Gears works well, and I managed to get a one to around nine ratio with the Lego Gears, and that will allow it to spin slower. Ideally, I'd want like a one to fifteen because that'll be every few seconds. I got it to spin every once every one point five seconds. And up here is a little bit of the physics behind it. It's the gear ratio. Basically, if you spin a, a bigger gear with a smaller gear, then that will uh, slow it down and create more torque. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the ball projection. The main two things that I focused on this was the consistency and the power. And those are the main two problems I faced. But, uh, so basically, the design that I found that worked the best was two side by side, and those that was the most consistent and would uh, work, work the best. Because the other ones, sometimes they top, touch the top and sometimes the bottom is a lot less consistent with the spin. Okay, and <laughs> so that was like that was like working for me that was with me for a lot of the way. And <laughs> Lord, Lord, what's the name of your working partner? Oh, Mia Mia is my cat that helped me along the way. And <laughs> uh, so I, over this project, even though I didn't come up with a great final product that was what I hoped, I got a lot of, I learned a lot of things from this. I learned that it's okay to create something and not finish it because nothing is completely finished. It can, like, you can infinitely improve anything. That's why, like, the MacBook, MacBook keeps coming out with new products, or cars keep coming out with new products. Um, I also learned that everything takes longer to do than you would think. So I discovered that even the time task will take, like, 10 times longer than you might expect. And, uh, I also got to experience the design process for the first time. That's what I'll be using next year and in the future, hopefully. And yeah, so this is basically my product, my capstone. And I didn't get a full, like I got a functioning design, but it wasn't great. And it kind of broke in testing. The motor kind of reversed and torqued out, but it kind of works still. And yeah. And so it was, it's usable, it's fun to use, but it's not perfect. But yeah, I learned a lot along the way and I'm glad I got to do this. Thank you, thank you Lars. We definitely have time for a few questions, and I have uh, some questions too. Who else has a question? Anyone have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think your ping pong skills improve? Uh, I haven't been able to use it too much, but they've definitely been definitely been out there. Um, and, and a follow up to that question is: If you were able to get it to actually go every two seconds, would that have helped better with improving your ping pong ball skills? Your ping pong. Skills? I think it would because right now it, it's a little bit fast. And yeah, it's, it's shooting a ball at you every one point yeah. five seconds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Yes. What else? Yeah. Uh, so you ever, if you have more time, consider making like a robotic <laughs> arm that can hit a ball back. That was that was one of my thoughts for the project, but that would be very hard to do. So that's like that's like the top level. So you have to be able to get sensor and stuff. So the question is, would you would you want to? I I use it. I've used it a few times over the past few days, but I haven't. And it worked. It worked. Yes. So it actually could improve someone's skills without another person. Yes. That was that was the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let, yeah. Let me follow that one up because uh, yeah, I like this is why I went back to this particular slide because Lars is going on about how like imperfect this thing is. I'm looking at this thing going, this is freaking amazing. You know, my perception of it is I'm seeing that it seems to be consistently serving the ball to the correct uh, uh, quadrant of the table. Yeah. Right. It, it worked most of the time, but occasionally it would like get jammed or, or I don't know. Which some, takes you back to the two second thing probably, right? 
right? Yeah, exactly. That's another reason. Yeah. So, yes, over there. Yeah. Um, so, what's the line? Are you doing like a second move or like just adjusting the speed? I would, so I would be using, I would be controlling the two motors individually. So, I could have one going faster than the other, or I could have one going one way, one the other, or like there's a bunch of different options. Now that got into the Raspberry Pi, and, and I, the, what Lars is telling me about the Raspberry Pi, this is a fascinating device because it's both mechanical and computational, right? Yeah. It's, it's got a circuit board in which you can choose to connect wires to different circuits, and then it's got an element that allows you to program what happens to those wires, yeah? yeah? Um, so while you found that somewhat frustrating, you, you managed to get this out of it. Yeah. Or, well, it's, this isn't actually using the Raspberry Pi because it's just spinning constantly. So it's not, right. it's not changing. Ah, so the Raspberry Pi would allow you to control yeah, it. Yeah, right. like on demand, yeah. Yeah. So in applying the Raspberry Pi to this project, did that make the Raspberry Pi more interesting to work with? Yeah, a lot. It, it, like, I didn't have a reason to work with it before. So. Yeah. So are you planning to use the Raspberry Pi more in the future? I'm sure I will. I'm yeah. Sure I will. And also Cobra? Uh, Python? No, I'm sorry, Python. Yeah, That's some yeah. snake, I'm whatever. Sure we'll, yeah. <laughs> in the future, coming. All right, cool. There's a question over here. Uh, if you were to use the Raspberry Pi to like make it um, have like random settings for each one inside you, is it like can you use the Raspberry Pi to have, to have like random specific settings? Specific settings that it no. Here does it fully randomize? No, it can randomize. That was the yeah. idea that mm -hmm. I was going for. Right. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, the, the other question I have has to do with the fact that you did, it also was in your final essay. You talked a lot about that iterative process, and you showed us uh, this slide of the engineering and design process there. Uh, and you talked a lot in your essay about the fact that this, is, this just can go on forever. You can go around and around and around. That put me in mind, I don't know about you guys, but that kind of, I, I'm a bit of a fan of Tesla and SpaceX. But it seems to me that that's one of the things that SpaceX really added to the rocket science uh, was the iterative process, if, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. going around and around and around really fast. Um, so how much of an effect do you think that's going to have on your approach to engineering uh, at I the next level? I think it like opened, opened my eyes to like a new way of doing it. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Which is not unlike some of the other things we've heard today about fail as often as possible. That's actually what that process is describing. Yeah. SpaceX, I don't know if anyone's seen it, SpaceX put together a video of all of the rockets they crashed as they were developing their first rocket. It's hilarious, it's wonderful, and they advertised it, right? They failed as often as possible. And there's some pretty good engineers in that organization. All right, everyone, it's been a great day. Thank you so much, and thank you, Lars.